Hi, my name is Mr. D and today I want to take a look at an SAT mixture word problem. So we have solution A is 10% alcohol by volume and solution B is 30% alcohol by volume. How many milliliters of solution B must be added to 200 milliliters of solution A to create a solution that is 25% alcohol by volume? So for SAT problems the goal is to find the quickest solution because it is a time test. So one method that's pretty effective is using the answer choices to see which one satisfies the conditions of the problem. So for a problem like this, we would want to record that A is 10% alcohol by volume. And we also know from the given information that solution B is 30% alcohol by volume. So now with this information, we could create a chart of some sort we're looking at solution A, solution B, and the mixture, which is the end result of combining solution A and solution B. And now the two aspects that we're comparing is the alcohol content and the volume of each solution and the end mixture. So now what we could do with this, we know that we have 200 milliliters of solution A. So if we're trying to find out how much alcohol is in 200 milliliters of solution A, what we could do is we have 200 milliliters and we're calculating 10% of 200 milliliters because in solution A, 10% of the solution is comprised of alcohol because of this information, 10% alcohol by volume. So if we find 10% of 200, which we could accomplish by multiplying by 10 over 100, this reduces to 200 over 100 simplifies to 2 and 2 times 10 is 20 so we have 20 milliliters of alcohol and if you look 20 over 200 reduces right back to 10 percent so now what we could do is we start trying out answer choices let's say we were to try out answer choice C we we said that we're gonna add 400 milliliters of solution B to the 200 milliliters of solution A. Well then what, would, what we would need to calculate is the alcohol, the amount of alcohol in 400 milliliters of solution B. So using this 400, we would be calculating 30% of 400. And if you observe, 400 over 100 reduces to 4. 4 times 30 equals 120. So we would have 120 milliliters of alcohol in 400 milliliters of solution B. So now the end mixture would have 20 plus 120 or 140 milliliters of alcohol and 200 plus 400 or 600 milliliters of solution. But then when we check 140 divided by 600 wouldn't give us 25 percent. So this would tell us right off the bat that solution C is out. So then what we would do from here is we would have to check out other answer choices. So as you can see, this method of substitution is not always the best method because you have five answer choices to choose from. So let's just assume by chance we had picked the right solution. That is, let's say we selected choice E. We claim that there's 600 milliliters of solution B. So then we would once again find 30% of this quantity. So we would multiply by 30 over 100. And now we would have 6 times 30 equals 180. So we have 180 milliliters of alcohol in 600 milliliters of solution B. So we have 600, and the end result was 180 milliliters of alcohol. So now when we add everything up, we have 20 plus 180 is 200, and 200 plus 600 is 800. And you'll notice that 200 divided by 800 reduces to 1 fourth, which is equal to 25%. So 200 over 800 equals 25%, which is exactly what we were looking for. So for a problem like this, we tried out C, and we got a percent that was too small. So this is one thing that may help. Since this percent would have been too small, we would have known to try out the bigger answer choices. That is, 600 is bigger than 400, so we could move in this direction. But as you could see, it was slightly time-consuming. So now what we could do is we could look at an alternate method for finding out the correct answer of choice, of choice E. 
So once again, we're still going to consider the fact that A is 10% and B is 30% alcohol by volume. And we know that we have 200 milliliters of solution A. So we're going to consider the fact that we have 200 milliliters of A and we're still going to find 10% of 200 milliliters, which will once again give us 20 milliliters. So using this information, we're looking at alcohol by volume. So we're setting up two, I'm sorry, 20 over 200, the two pieces of information, which once again we said reduces to 10%. And now what we're looking for, we'll call it X, is the milliliters of solution B needed. And one thing we want to consider is if we need X milliliters of solution B, then 0.30X would represent the alcohol in solution B. That is, 0.30X represents the amount of alcohol in X milliliters of solution B. So what that tells us, since we're comparing alcohol by volume, we're going to add this 0.30x to the numerator because this is where we have alcohol. Alcohol is represented in the numerator and the total volume x will go in the denominator because we're adding this to the 200 milliliters of solution A. So we're going to add this to the 200 milliliters in the denominator. But now what this tells us is that this new solution, the goal is to add enough of this milliliters of B so that we have a 25% alcohol by volume final result. So if the final result needs to be 25% alcohol, we could set the left side equal to 25 over 100. And now we'll note that 25 over 100 will reduce to 1 over 4. So now to solve for x, we'll, all we need to do is cross multiply. And we'll put parentheses so we know to distribute. 1 times 200 plus x is 200 plus x. And now we have 4 times 20 plus 0.30x. So 4 times 20 is 80. And then 4 times 0.30 is 1.20. And we have x attached to the last term. So now, I'm just going to do this quickly. We're going to subtract 80 from both sides. And at the same time, we're going to subtract x from both sides. Now you'll notice 80 minus 80 cancels. x minus x will cancel. And we have 120 is equal to 1.20x minus x. If we think of this as a 1 in front, will give us 0.2x. And now to solve for x, we're going to divide both sides by 0.2. And this will tell us that x equals, if you punch this in a calculator, you'll get x equals 600. Which tells us, once again, that we have answer choice E as our final result. So if we were doing this algebraically, we could set up the following equation. But once again, if your algebra isn't sharp at the test, the method of plugging in the answer choices, as shown in the previous method, is also a good approach. So whichever one you feel more comfortable with, that's the one you should use. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on solving an SAT mixture word problem. Thank you all for watching and I hope that this was helpful.